What is going on, everybody? It's Armchair Seat back in with the Agia for another episode of the Armchair Animals podcast. Um, and today we are going to kind of first talk about um, the future of the podcast, not in a serious way at all, but um, just kind of like the style. We usually um, will obviously start off with what our reactions to some of the weekend games are, and then we'll go into our topics and then end with um, previews of next uh, future games. We kind of want to switch that up a little bit because I feel like it forces a lot of games either popular games where we end up talking about Napoli every single week for some reason, I don't know how, or like our preview games are games that we're not necessarily as sure about, but because they're big games coming up, um, and like maybe if we're reviewing a game we didn't watch, then that's not really the greatest way to do it, because obviously it's hard to watch every single game. So we're going to try to either keep the same setup, but only talk about like one to two games because we watched them, um, if we have something we really want to pull out of that weekend that just happened, um, because it is important to talk about stuff like that, but it's not necessarily, we don't want to just like force games that we didn't watch to talk about because then you're not getting the true analyst part of the armchair analyst because we didn't actually watch the game. We can only go off of stats and it's kind of hard to judge off of that. So we want to switch up and just kind of talk about topics and stuff like that because the topics are really like the bread and butter, I'd say, of the podcast and where a lot of your guys' comments, which have been great, have come from. They've come from either we've pulled something off of Reddit for FIFA, off of Reddit for soccer, or just like big topics like the World Cup and such. So those are really where our com their comments are coming from. So that's where we see like you guys liking the podcast and interacting. And that's where we, we like to talk about the most as well. I think we like debating um, the, the topics instead of the games themselves because the games themselves can be arbitrary depending on like the score, even if we didn't watch it. So I think Aguilla would agree if, if he has anything to add to that. Um, no, you can go I, ahead. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if there are games you want us to discuss, put that in the comments, you know, uh, or you want us like, to look over after they've happened uh, i'm down for that to keep an eye on we want to make the podcast about you guys as much as it's about us so uh, make sure that you comment and give us suggestions and if you prefer the old style if that's what you guys want then we'll continue that but we just thought that you know you guys it seems from the comments that the the, the topics that we talk about are the most relevant and what people really enjoy you know c uh, interacting with so that's how we thought we would focus on that yeah yeah that's what i'm saying i think the best part about posting a youtube video is the comments like even if like a thousand people watch one of my videos if it had zero comments i'd be like uh what do i okay what do i do with this i mean like cool like a lot of people watch it but i have no clue like if anyone even enjoyed it, what they even saw, like did they watch two seconds of it. But when you guys comment and stuff, it shows that you're watching through, or even if you skip ahead to certain parts, you're at least watching that part through and you have a comment for us. And I like re I like responding to your comments. And the comments can even spur future um, podcast topics. Um, but I'd say that's that's about what we want to do going forward. So if we skip, if you hear the podcast start and it's no, we're not actually talking about games right away, um, then it, that's just because of that. So. We might just be get, we might jump right into a FIFA topic. Like we might just cover like a lot of FIFA that day. Um, because I like I, I think with our loves of FIFA in real life, it's that's what the whole podcast was based on is like a love of both and how do they intertwine and how can like sometimes like real life affect FIFA and then I mean FIFA affecting real life probably not as much but uh, sometimes with uh, the mar the mar or the uh, games on Squad Battles it's kind of cool to see the video like the Bayern video that just went out. But without further ado, let's um. I mean, let's talk about a game. I think I was I was debating back and forth where we should talk about it, but let's talk about the Manchester derby. Just with everything that happened, um, it seems to be a hot conflict. Um, even the refs from before the game even started to during the game and after the game, then ever after the game, what happened? What happened during the game? Because it was a great game that we both watched. So I want to get your first your your initial impact, on, so you can um, talk about it first. I mean, hey, I think obviously I felt that it was probably a you know. A deserved win for Manchester City, uh, based on how they played overall, and you can see that their quality is one step ahead. I think that obviously the depth is insane at City, um, and you could see that. I, I mean, it's hard to say. I don't think Manchester is that far behind City. Uh, United mm. is that far yeah. behind City, but without Pogba, Fellaini, um, Jones. Um, uh, it was it was it was definitely much much harder to break down that city 
and I think they were a bit reserved, especially at home at the start of the game. Um, and I really think they should have gone further. To be honest, City didn't have that many chances to score. I think both chances that they did score from were com coming out of defensive mistakes. So, uh, but they did put a lot, have a lot of possession and created chances much more than United, you know. But so I think a draw or City win would have been the fair result. But on, but honestly. I don't think it's as impressive as people make it out to be. Yes, they won an away game and they got the job done, which is, the, the, I think that's the impressive part, not their play style in general, because ultimately it's about the results and which they achieved. Um, so I, I think that I, I felt like Mourinho probably should have gone for it more a little bit. Uh, what was more disappointing was that I don't think it was uh, Mourinho's tactics, uh, you know, obviously could have gone more, but I think the performance of the players really let him down. Especially Lukaku, who was abysmal in that game. Mm -hmm. Past couple uh, of like, games, really. Yeah, but felt like he 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 looks like he's closer to scoring an own goal than actual goal. Well, I mean, he had um, two assists for the wrong team. Yeah, but I mean, in general, I just thought that uh, United did well to come back. They also came back from a defensive mistake too from City, so they did well to come back. It's just they couldn't create that much and without Pogba it's obviously going to be really hard to create so I, I think all in all it was fair result I just uh, it was an enjoyable game um, I, I much preferred the Arsenal United game mm -hmm. to watch as a neutral uh, not yeah but um, yeah, semi-neutral for you yeah I guess <laughs> I, I do like Mourinho but as yeah. a, in a coach if you were to pick on the EPL like team a, probably City just because yeah. or United just because of Mourinho yeah but, but uh, City has Bernardo Silva so it's kind of difficult. do they? Yeah. I haven't really seen much of him. I get about two minutes a week out of him. Hey, for those two minutes, I want the city to win. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I get your point. But still, I just thought that it was a. Uh, um, uh, I I I think that the point difference that City have honestly, like City look mad good everywhere in the Champions League, and they look so much better. I just think that the teams behind are not performing to their quality that they have. And that's why they're so ahead. Not because of some amazing... Like, they're not that superior to the other teams. I think they have better depth. Uh, and they have, you know... Um, the other teams have been messing up, in my opinion. And obviously, their, their players are performing at the right time. And a lot of credit has to go to Guardiola and the players themselves. But at the same time, I just don't think... It's like, if, if this was like let's say last year when Spurs were kind of keeping up with Leicester, you know, that's a different story when the other teams weren't lining down. But we've seen a lot of different teams like losing to teams they really shouldn't be losing to. Like I mean, Burnley's in fourth. Exactly. So, so that just something. shows you. So I think we should take a word of caution and just see how the rest of the season goes. I think an injury to like De Bruyne uh, would really massively impact, um, you know, City's chances. If I think Pogba, uh, De Bruyne was out as much as Pogba has been, I think it would be a, a very different story altogether. De Bruyne is really important to the City attacks. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. So, I I, I agree partially. I don't think that they're they're not. So they're unbeatable because they haven't lost yet. But I don't think they're unbeatable. Like they're not miles and miles and miles ahead of everyone else. It's just like you said that they've had they have plenty of depth. So if someone does get lose out, like someone can come in. But yeah, like a, a player like De Bruyne would have an impact. I think that they would have a loss at least on their record somewhere if De Bruyne was out for an extended period of time um, and missed like some bigger draws, games. Yeah, that. yeah, if, even if a few more draws. But they like they have been really lucky in the past few games. They almost drew with a loss to West Ham. They drew with West Ham in the la even in the last game. David Silva. Scored. No, they ended up beating West Ham. They but they were down, yeah, they came back. I'm saying they could have lost or drawn, but... Yeah, yeah, they easily could have. And was it against Burnley? They scored an 80th minute winner with David Silva last weekend? What was that against? Yeah, um... I forget who it was against, but yeah, I mean, I think it's like the last like five or six games they basically won like yeah. two to one um, with so last like minute winners like before the United game. The Bruyne's quality in those moments is like I would have assumed that would have impacted it a lot. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, yeah, exactly. Maybe a few draws here, or a few, like, different uh, results here and there, either a draw or a loss in a few different places. But, I mean, they, like, the thing is he isn't out, so, um, they and they haven't lost. It's not like United's really been completely underperforming. I think that they've been playing really well without Pogba. Yeah, and I without Pogba, that, like, without Pogba, but, but like, you, yeah, you, you physically can't catch some, a team that's not losing. It's, it's yeah. impossible to catch a team that doesn't lose. 
Yeah, but people love to like you know bash on United first, but like they're still second, you know. Like that's what, I've never bashed on United this year at all. Like other than like me, like not if I, I didn't like the way they played or something like that. But again, like they're second, you can't argue with anything like that. They are they are second place, like, um, and they look like they're pretty comfortable to sit in second place for the rest of the year. But you saw um, Shakhtar, you know, beat City, so that shows you that you know it's not like the every. I mean, City had a youth team out, but yeah. I mean, still, like, they had still some really quality players and stuff, and, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you know Pep, he doesn't like to lose. Whether no, yeah, of course, that they're, so. they're still going for the win, but yeah. the, te- the team wasn't stellar, and they no, did have the, big, they have, they have the big game coming up in the weekend. Imagine with one or two crucial injuries, that would be the team they put out in the Premier League. So No, yeah, I'm saying, like, if they, injuries happen, yeah, they are catchable, but, like, yeah. it's, it, it's, right now it's teams behind them, specifically United, hoping that City gets injured. Which is, yeah. and that's really their only hope because, like, United can't do much better than they're doing. Like, they are winning most of their games. They can't, like, they physically just can't get much yeah, better. I think the start of the season, uh, not start of the season, the mid season. Yeah, the right after the yeah. first couple wins, like, the yeah, streak. They had that, and if they had kept the pressure, I think City would have drawn or lost by now because the pressure. There actually is so pressure, much. yeah. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like they're playing free, yeah. yeah. Now Which it might be one reason. Oh, sorry, we keep cutting each other off. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, like, the pressure was, I mean, the pressure being off, I think, has uh, been part of the reason why they're getting these two-to-ones, because they're playing free, they're not really playing as disciplined, so I think that they're, like, like, the draw against West Ham, like, they didn't, they, they dominated West Ham, but, like, they didn't, I don't know, if they weren't clinically there, I don't know if it was just, like, mindset or what, but I feel like if the pressure was on, a team of that quality would go out and, like, just destroy West Ham instead of winning two to one late minutes but like i said like they're undefeated at the point end of the day they're undefeated so in the yeah, premier i mean not like west ham just beat chelsea so you know some it might be a bit tougher now that you know they got i guess moist the genius of moist <laughs> oh yes um no, like i think if they i don't know well i i just think that i i wish united kind of like you know had pogba and would have really gone for it a, a bit more yeah uh, but it was expected their approach was going to be without Pogba, so we can, you know... They no, yeah, I thought well they played pretty well in the game, so yeah. They did well to come back, and I think that... Uh, but, hey, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on, like, what happened at the end of the game. Uh, so, obviously, I think the story goes that Mourinho went and complained that City are being really obnoxious, loud, and, you know, uh, disrespectful in their opponent's home by, you know... Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it got into a shouting match, and then you know, city, you know, city players came out, United players came out, and it kind of like became a mini brawl. Lukaku threw a bottle at Arteta, who's the coach? Um, the, the best, the Lord Arteta. But, but yeah, but I and, and at the end of the day, somehow Mourinho got milk thrown on his head. <laughs> So, I mean, from my perspective, from what I've been reading and Reddit and stuff, a lot of people are like, oh, look at Mourinho, he's taunting, like, he can't take a loss, and everyone's, you know, criticizing Mourinho for, like, going up. But I, I still think that that doesn't in- to give you permission to throw milk on s- a coach's head or uh, even, you know, start a shouting match. Yeah, Mourinho mm-hmm. came up. Maybe you should, shouldn't you be the bigger man, especially since you're the guest? I think that there's no winners here. I think that there's they're both losers at the end, of, like in this situation, not in the game, obviously. But you, Mourinho, Mourinho would have been hooting and hollering in another t- team stadium if they had beat him in a derby match. It's not I mean, like I, I know he's. Like, I didn't. I don't know what happened, but like celebrating at Arsenal or anything like that, you know, or Spurs. Who who overly celebrates at Arsenal? I mean, Spurs <laughs> is a huge victory, though. I think he but no, it's 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 different though because like you're gonna celebrate against your cross city rival. Like M- Mourinho wouldn't like it's 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 Mourinho shouldn't have complained. Who cares? It's they won. Like who cares? Like it shows that they really. Yeah, maybe that's what it shows. I, what Mourinho should no. I'm saying I'm saying I my I preface this with that they're both losers. Yeah. Um, because Mourinho shouldn't have complained. Because it's just it's just the result. Like, why would you not be happy? Like, sure, they're a little loud, but like, why complain about it? It looks worse. You should actually be proud that they're really loud because that means you had a great team, um, and they're very excited they got the win because they know how tough of an opponent you are. Like, I feel like, but then at the same time, like, if you're City, you just beat them. Why let them get in your head? Like, you should be the like as soon as you hear that, you should like be like, oh, they're complaining that we beat them. Basically, like, you should just stay in your locker room or whatever. 
your away locker room and just like continue to celebrate. Don't come out. That that just looks so bad on City as well, because you don't. It's like what is it? Eye for eye makes the whole, whole world blind. Like he complained. Now you gave him basically what he wanted. He wanted a rise out of you because now it looks really bad out. Of, it looks really bad on City for uh, basically coming out and attacking him after him just saying comments about them being loud. Like. I don't. I think that no one's a winner here, and I don't think anyone's worse than the other person because reacting to it is just as bad as doing it in the first place. Uh, yeah, I agree. But I just don't like. I think guarding as a guest, I don't think that I personally would do that. But I mean, I may not do it, but I think if I beat if if Arsenal played um, and White White her or I guess Wembley um, and beat Tottenham, I would expect them to be celebrating quite loudly. Because it yeah, is a cro- it's a rival match. You get you get up as a fan. You're way more. Do you think city fans were quiet in their house watching no, the game? The, but shouting is fine. But going up and like taunting the opponent is kind of like a... well, that's different. You said they were shouting and stuff like the taunting after he said something. That was after they came out and stuff. Oh yeah, after they came out. Yeah, like I said, you shouldn't have reacted. You should have stayed in your locker room and continued to celebrate. Just stay in your own pe- like your locker room is whether it's in their sta- stadium or not. That's yours for that game. So if you stay within those walls and you celebrate, I don't think that they they should be able to say anything about you. But like to come out and react is so petty from City as well. Yeah, I like why react? Like just say I think it, I think City would have looked so like cool, calm, and collected if they had just stayed like yeah, didn't I think react. They would have come out so much nicer. Like, they would have looked awesome. amazing. Yeah, everyone would have just been like, give City a title. They deserve it. Yeah, like they we we all would have liked City. Like City would have became like our favorite team <laughs> because of it. But. Yeah, to react just as bad as the initial thing, but like, I don't think that City's worse for reacting either. Yeah, I just don't think they're better for re- like. I don't think they're better off. They're just not worse off. I think they're well, both. One, I think it's a, just a tough situation that ruined like a good game and a good atmosphere. Yeah, what I did like is um, like one thing that showed me that is that Mourinho hasn't lost the dressing room like people were claiming. Like if mm-hmm. if uh, Rom- Lukaku like rushed out, you know, like to save, like to you know, help out Mourinho. Like, if you really don't care about your coach, are you gonna rush? You know, and risk. No, I don't. I don't know how people like. I think people are so dumb to say that he lost the locker room, like that quickly. Like, of course, coaches lose the locker room. Um, even like obviously, players in Chelsea didn't love Mourinho. It's not necessarily he lost it, but like they obviously didn't love him. But like to say this early when United's playing this well because they lost one game against the best team in the league to say he lost the locker room is just sad. Like in general, like that's just lazy. Uh, reporting from people. Whoever said that, I don't know, but I think it'd be easy to see that they're they're going out and playing for him. Like maybe there's a player or two that don't like him because they're not getting game time, but that's different than losing the locker room as well. And that even then, I think that he's he's actually rotating the team quite a bit. Yeah, I just it'll be interesting to see if there are any suspensions and stuff like that because obviously you know it might be that Ederson and company and Lukaku all get you know some sort of punishment but we'll see what happens yeah but, hey. I think that'd be stink that'd stink if like one team got a worse punishment than the other as well yeah I, I think, think that yeah we'll they should it, 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 either equal it out or just don't give out any punishments for it yeah one no, of the two no point of crying over spilt milk haha <laughs> you were waiting for that one you literally just want to talk about it for that joke <sighs> So okay. Let's yeah, let's move on. There was really no other game I think that we watched that stuck out in our head. Obviously, the Merseyside Derby happened. Um, great result, I guess, for Everton. Even though Liverpool dominated, it was just... it was a, I thought it was a penalty. I watched yeah, the review. I, I thought it was a penalty. I think the only point that's really talk about is there are two points. One, how good is Mohamed Salah? I Sorry. Mean, he's amazing, yeah. Uh, 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 Saladona, I guess we would call him <laughs> that. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's I, awesome. He's amazing, yeah. Uh, but I think it was it a pen or not a pen? I thought so. so. I mean, uh, I, you use it. It stinks because you see it not called a, a lot. Yeah. But by the rules, that should have been called Would a pen. Mean? But you see it go overlooked so often, and I think that's where Liverpool, like either fans or players, and complain is because it goes so uncalled so often. But yeah. it is. It, it is. I thought it was a stone cold penalty. Like. It, it, in the rule book, that's if if that same exact challenge happened at the uh, at the halfway line, you know they're blowing the whistle and calling free kick there. Yeah, agreed. I don't. I I'm I'm just very against penalties being different weight, like a foul in the box being different than a foul outside the box. Yeah, exactly. I think just like you have to be very as a as a ref, you have to be consistent. Yeah, you may be different than another ref, which that can't be taken into consideration. But as long as you're consistent as a ref in the game, 
I, I think that has to be looked at like that. I mean, so I thought it was a pen, at least. And it's Lovren, so you know he's clumsy as heck anyways. Yeah, I mean, that was a moment of madness. And I think a lot of individual mistakes, and it's a pattern now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's and that's kind of should, should it's hard to blame Klopp, but at the same time it's it's like you know like if it, it keeps happening then there's something wrong inherently going on. Yeah, if at the end of the year they're back outside the top four, I don't know how Klopp isn't on the hot seat. Whether he gets fired or not, that's a little. It might be too early. Like in the in this day and age, it's not too early. But in general, I think I, it might be too early still to fire him at the end of the year. But if they miss out top four again, like or not again, but like back up to the top four after one year inside, I don't think they could be happy. Because yeah. they bought Salo, who's been incredible, but, like, they just didn't address their biggest problem. Because, yeah. like, I think that if you bought a center back, a left back, and a goalie, and never bought Salah, I think Liverpool is in a higher position. Regardless of how good Salah is doing, I think that rounding out their team would have put them in a higher position overall. Because Salah, Salah's the top scorer, and they're not... They're, they're, I guess they're third. Are they third? No, they're not even third. They're not even... Yeah, they're fifth. Wow. So, so I'm just thinking Burnley's in fourth. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's throw, that's been throwing me off, is Burnley's in fourth. So, but again, Tot, and that's with Tottenham and Arsenal behind them. So, it's not like Burnley's ahead of them, yes. So, Burnley, I mean, at this rate, could keep it up. But you have so many, you have two good, t good teams behind you. Um, uh, they they easily could miss top four because Chelsea looks great right now. United and City both look great, so that's like almost your top three as of now. Of course, there's so much time could happen and injuries could happen, but it's looking like if no injuries happen, they stay like the way they're doing. That's the top three, so you have a huge fight for top four. And if Liverpool misses out, I think Klopp's gonna be in the hot seat. Yeah. And, and Everton, every, it's good for Everton to get a point, I guess, on this, and maybe that'll spur them on to uh, bigger wins and. Maybe away from the relegation zone. Eight goals in the season, not a bad signing, actually. Has as many as Lukaku. Yep. <laughs> they, traded, they traded places. Exactly. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, so... Let's just move on. Yeah, let's... Uh, so, big big thing that happened this week... Well, I mean, I guess it's the reason we have the topics. Two big things that happened this week. I think we just continue off with the IRL and maybe finish off with a long FIFA discussion. Um, this week was the draw for the round of 16 um, in the Champions League. So we want to do a little prediction, early predictions. Um, obviously, the games aren't coming up necessarily soon. I don't know exactly when they hold the games. Uh, February. Yeah, I don't know if I can predict because, as you know, many people say, like the form that is we have now will be very different. It, that's what I'm saying. Form's different. Injuries could happen. But this is going to be our early predictions, so we can see if we still feel the same way before the round start. Because we'll obviously do podcasts in between now and then. So let's give our early predictions, and we'll go through and talk about, like, I think it's actually a pretty good draw in general. Like, of course there's going to be an easier team here and there. And, of course, I mean, we'll talk about the big one, Real Madrid, PSG. It stinks that they're playing each other. But, the I mean, Real Madrid can't really complain with getting second, though. Like, if you get stuck with a good... If you're, if you're PSG, you're like, oh, come on. Like, really? We got first place? Like, we beat out, we beat out Bayern? We beat out Bayern for first place, and we get stuck with Real Madrid. Like, PSG has a right to complain, but Real Madrid obviously have no right to complain yeah. that they I got mean, maybe the hardest Spurs, team. Spurs should be really sad. Spurs is tough, too, yeah. But, like, in general, like, that's not too bad. It's not, like, four hard games and then four, like, it's like it's not Basitka's Basel. It kind of is, man. Do Roma, Shakhtar, and then you've got Bayern. Roma's good, though. I think Roma's pretty good. No, but Shakhtar isn't the quite. No, but of course Shakhtar has to play someone though. Man City, Basel. Yeah, so but again, like the, I mean, your bad teams have to play someone. But I'm just happy they're not playing like each. Like I'm happy Basitkas isn't playing Shakhtar, because like Basitkas obviously had a great run and they deserve they deserve to be first in the group. But I think Basitkas is lower quality than Barcelona. Yeah. So like. I don't know about that. They have Quaresma, so. True. But, uh, okay, so let's go down. We'll start off with the way the draw happened. At least that's the way the picture is. Juventus, Tottenham, as we discussed. Um, it's, like I said, it stinks for Tottenham. Also stinks that they're outside the top four it looking in. Juventus too, to be honest. It does, no, it does for both. But, like, Juventus, like we said, like the teams that came in second have no right to complain because it win your group and you should have an easier game. Just don't tell PSG that. Um, but, yeah, so... Juventus's oh, no. form, I think, has been lower than past years. So, I mean, you have to look. Tottenham definitely could uh, win it, win this. I mean, it is over Honestly, two legs as well. It depends on the form, but I, I could see Tottenham going through. 
I no, I definitely could see Tottenham going through. I think again, it depends on the league too, because like both teams, I think both these teams are lower in the league than where they want to be. So um, they're both they they're both pushing very hard for the league as well. well so it's going to be is where they should be, which is like top four. And but they're not top. Well, I mean, they're not top four now, but I mean, I they could go top four, yeah, re soon. Uh, but. At least they're in and about. Well, Juventus is b not even first place, so that's a big mm -hmm. change for them compared to other seasons. I think their defense is looking weak mm -hmm. uh, and uh, definitely ex could be exposed by the pace of Spurs, especially the counter press. So we could definitely see an upset happening. I think that's what I predict. I think it'll be a question of one. Uh, the, the midfield, obviously, as usual, comes down to. Uh, but. Uh, I think the most important player, we'll see how he progresses from where he is now with Dele Ali, who's not in the best form right now. So Yeah, yeah Dele Ali is going to be huge if they I have a chance. I think that, yeah, so the, his floating role is probably, like, will cause a lot of problems to Juventus, in my opinion. In the same way, they kind of caused problems to Real Madrid. Um, so w we'll see what happens there. But I honestly, like, based on if I were to decide, like, a prediction from today, I would go for Spurs to go through. Which is kind of controversial, but I, I just, I just think Spurs have been great in the Champions League, and they just have that pressing ability. And Juventus have just been a bit weak, so. That's I don't think it's I don't think it's crazy controversial for you to say Tottenham because they did I mean, at the end of the day finish above Real Madrid in the group. Um, they've had a great Champions League run because they had to, and and Dort, we have to remember it wasn't like two easy teams in the group and then Real Madrid and Tottenham. Dortmund was in that group, um, so it was good for them to beat them as well. So I don't think it's crazy to say Tottenham. Um, would win. I don't think they're completely the underdogs. They are the one, the higher seed, I guess, if you were to just look at it that way. Um, they are the team that finished top of the group. Um, obviously, I'm going to say Juventus is going to go through because Tottenham's not going to go through in my head. Um, you, uh, Arsenal's going through in my head, but <laughs> uh, no. But yeah, I, I I mean, like you said, this is this is probably as close to a, like uh, I think it's as close to 50-50 as we'll have in this. There's a few other games that are pretty close to 50-50 as well. Um, but this is this this might be the the best matchup in terms of fifty fifty. I mean, like, on paper, yeah. On paper, yeah, on paper, of course. And again, this is our early results, so I don't want to look too far ahead, like, um, and try think? to think of what's gonna happen. I'm gonna say Juventus. Yeah. Well, we'll because it, because it's fifty fifty and Tottenham stink. <laughs> here in the pod, the loser has to give fifty cents to the winner. Fifty cents, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so next game, I think, a little less fifty fifty. Um, Manchester City, Basel. Uh, Basel, great Manchester form, though. Manchester City, I only know Basel. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> hey, ba they're in great form. Uh, they, have some, they have some players, but again, we're talking Man City, who hasn't think, lost I yet, other than missing, Shakhtar. Uh, Oberlin or something, which is a United target as well. Like He's caused so much trouble with his pace. Mm -hmm. Power, he's like 17, 18 years old, I think. Um, and I think he could cause some trouble to Man City, especially as his, the fullbacks love to push up. Um, and he, he, you know, there's definitely pockets of space that Basel could exploit on the counter, uh, the same way kind of like they did to you know Benfica and stuff. Um, but um, I mean, it's hard to see past Man City, obviously. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just gonna say Man City. I don't think anyone in their right mind would bet against Man City. On no, like well, especially with it being two legs as well. I don't see Basel winning both games. Yeah, I think sh like if it was if it was one game, yeah. Shakhtar showed a way to beat Man City, and I think Basel will kind of take that frame, as I said, really exploit the fullbacks pushing up. But mm -hmm. with the ability to score that Man City have, I think it won't be a goalless draw, uh, goalless for either side. So, but I think Man City will just overpower Basel. Yeah, I, I like you said, I don't think anyone's going to bet against Man City. So, so I think this game is actually uh, you said Juventus Tottenham, but I think this is the game. This I, I think if we're talking about the same game, I don't know if we look at the same picture, but I also could agree. I, I just looked at it again. I'm like, well, this isn't as obvious as it looks. But you're gonna say Porto Liverpool? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that's that is the game to watch out for. I think Porto's in insane form this year. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a team we don't get to see like Juventus and Tottenham fifty fifty. We but we kind of know what we're getting with both clubs. Um, as like a fan, like as a fan, you don't see Porto play as much. You might watch them more because you, obviously you are, you have the connection to Portugal and Liga Nos, But like, I don't think your your average fan is watching as many Porto games as they're watching Juve and Tottenham games. Like, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be exciting for a lot of people. A lot of people are gonna be excited to see how Porto plays. 
Yeah, I think Liverpool's defense is definitely fragile, and as the coach said, you know, like Liverpool has one of the best attacks, but they have their weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can definitely say that, um, you know, Liverpool can be exposed by the attack. Like Porto's attack has been superb. You know, they have like Abu Bakar, who's, you know, he scored five goals in the group stages as well. I didn't surprise to get team in the knockout stage card. Um, five, I think five goals and a few assists too. And they've got you know players like uh, Herrera in the midfield, Mexican player, mm -hmm. uh, national team player, which you Hector. probably have seen. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hector Herrera. And they've got Corona. Um, you know they've got uh, Brahimi, who's you know he's probably with Jonas the best two players in the league, uh, in the Liga Nos, and he's definitely going to leave after the season to a big club, and he's like got magical feet, and the intricacy in their play and their directness, I think, could really cause problems to Liverpool. Um, it might come down to who concedes more from set pieces, to be honest. But <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> but, uh, I mean. But no, I think, Oops, so I think it's I definitely think. closer than people think. I wouldn't just say Liverpool. I think that Porto have a genuine chance to cause an upset, but I think you'll see how the league looks like at that point for Porto because I think they care more about the league. Um, yeah. But I, I obviously, if Liverpool is not in the top four, then that would be impacting them as well. So um, I, 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 my gut tells me that it, obviously I want to say like, Liverpool will go through, but I think Porto will win one of the games. I was thinking the same thing. I think overall Liverpool is going to go through, but um, depending on where that first game is, if the first game first game's in Port like in Portugal, I think yeah. that Porto is really going to surprise Liverpool with how they play. Um, and I, I think mean, people are going to be shocked to see. Like I, I think there's a lot of people that think Liverpool could walk this, and I think that Porto will shock them in the first game. But I think comfortably Liverpool will, or maybe not the first game. But I think well, I think like you said, Porto will. I could win a game, but Liverpool might win the tie just based on goals or like you said, goals from set pieces. If I'm not mistaken, like Porto did beat Bayern at their home last year, they, uh, two years ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. and I, like I said, either I think the first game in general, whether whether, whether it's played in Portugal or in Liverpool. Um, that's. I think they're going to really surprise them with how they play and how how yeah. good they are as a team. And like you said, I think they could win that first game, but Liverpool might adjust for the second game and win the tie. That's. I like I said, it's gonna be that's gonna be a good one though. It's gonna be so close. I I'd rather watch the close ones. I think in this this round of sixteen. Yeah, I mean, obviously Real Madrid Paris, which is the next game to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of hard. It's impossible to decide between those two. Um, yeah, I mean, right now, yeah. Very much, very impossible. I mean, this is where you like you you see like a pl this is where a player like Ronaldo has to put a stamp down. I mean, he's scoring again. Whereas as of now, he's scoring again. Well, in um, the Champions League, the the Real Madrid is just a different beast. It's kind of like, it is too. Yeah, it's like no matter what their form is in the league, yeah, you you like could LeBron see them winning. James in the in the in the playoffs in you know game six, seven. You know when he really turns it on, when it really matters. That's mm -hmm. kind of like Real Madrid in the past two seasons. Yep. You know, we we were thought we thought they were down and out against Wolfsburg, came back and won that game. You know, similar ways they've done it before last year against Atletico Bayern and stuff. You know, really mm -hmm. put put on the pressure when they need to. I think Paris, uh, obviously, uh, Unai Emery doesn't quite have the experience in the Champions League at the latter stages like before they did bottle a four zero lead last time, last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Uh, so that really came to play like his experience, you know, like he, he was and the players themselves, you know, like missing. So I think Real Madrid could probably pounce on that. But I'm really curious kind of like who they bring in in January, uh, both teams. If they, I don't think Paris will bring anyone in, but I, yeah, I think, think Paris Real Madrid will definitely yeah. bring on someone. So um, we'll see. I think it's also Neymar's chance to prove that he's – the world's best player. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's really gonna. I think it's really gonna come down to uh, Neymar Ronaldo to win, like to win the tie. Like I, I mean, both teams are incredible, um, but I think one of those players is gonna decide it for their team um, to move I mean, on to the next round. I think personally, it's kind of gonna come down to the defense for me. It's gonna be how good Thiago Silva and R R R Ramos perform overall. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I there's I like that though. Like that this matchup throughout the field that you're looking at. Like, I mean, you're looking at. I mean, I don't even know who's going to play right wing, but, like, I'm thinking, like, you look at Ronaldo, Neymar, even, like, I mean, Cavani's got it over Benzema right now, but... Yeah, I also think that it, it, the Emery loves to play the, uh, you know, f uh, four, 
I think he's been playing the 4-3-2-1 now, uh, kind of, uh, with Draxler in the midfield, uh, in the league especially, so we'll see how that kind of pans out against Casemiro, Modric, and Cruz, which is far superior than Rabio, Draxler, uh, again, anything they can offer, so, mm -hmm. and Verratti. Uh, yep. Not that Verratti is not bad, and Rabio is great. I mean, they're all good, yeah. <laughs> they're, but they're just it's, it's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough draw for both teams right now. Yeah, I just think that Real Madrid's midfield will be able to kind of like crowd out that is, is, is that uh, PSG midfield. Is I think they push up a lot as well. Uh, they're far more attacking minded, so uh, I think they'll leave gaps for Modric and Cruz to operate in, um, and then. And I don't think Verratti has enough about him, especially tactical discipline, to uh, not only not get a red card, but also be able to control those two maestros by himself. Yeah, like you said, Real Madrid's form is different in Champions League, no matter what. Like, even if they're in good form in the league, like, they're just, like, incredible in the Champions League. So, I mean, you have to look at them as well. And obviously, like, if they do, if the league does continue this way and Barcelona keeps just running rampant, by the time we even get to the round of 16, like, Real Madrid be like, might might just say to themselves like let's just go win the Champions League and they they could they could easily just say let's go win the Champions League and they could just go win the Champions League that's how good they are as a team so I think I think they edge it uh, but it I, it's gonna be incredible to watch yeah because be it's not like these teams are known for like out defending teams and winning they're, they're teams that are gonna score and I think we're gonna see some goals for sure. and I'm I'm excited for that one yeah and then we've got. Uh... Bayern with Besiktas. I think, uh, I mean, it's hard to look past Bayern with the quality they have, but I think going to Turkey is obviously hard for the away leg especially. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I know that I think Besiktas can score uh, against, you know, Quaresma scored against Bayern, so maybe he'll score again. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they, easily can score, but yeah. They, they look terrible in the league, and that's what's concerning. You know, they look great in the Champions League, but they've been looking terrible in the league. So, uh, we'll see kind of how their form pans out, but if they are gonna risk and buy some players in January, they've just been very trapped in the in the league, and and that just kind of shows you how that maybe they don't have quite the quality to match up against Bayern. Yeah, I mean, you need you need a, like to come against a team like Bayern, you're gonna need all of your like you're gonna need your best play at that time, and if you're struggling to pull out your best play in the league, like I don't think you over two legs, you're gonna beat Bayern. Like you said, you may score, you may even do well real one game. You could even like maybe maybe get like a 1-0, but I don't think over two legs you're going to be beating Bayern um, with the team that Pacitus has. I, I, I mean, it's Bayern too. It's just like they're got to be closer. They're going to be up there with favorites in general overall. So especially because, well, the league is a lot closer now but for them. But again, it's just Bayern's team. So uh, there's so we have three games left. Um, there's, <laughs> I mean, let's just talk Roma Shakhtar because it's probably everyone's least exciting matchup for um, yeah, I'm all about Bernard, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm all about I'm all about Strootman, so he's 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 sitting, he's hanging his, his jersey hanging up on the wall behind me. But Shout out to I've, the Cerna fans. <laughs> but no, yeah, the informed Cerna from last year, or whatever. Hey, he's amazing. But no, but, uh, it's uh, I mean I think it's Roma got a good draw and I think they'll go through. Um, but they do are inconsistent, so maybe they'll lose one game, but they should have enough quality to get through. <laughs> yeah, we saw Shakhtar can be exciting in the attack and score goals. But I think overall, yeah, like, again, this is one of those over two legs. I just don't see Shakhtar yeah. performing the way they did against City in Roma, performing poorly enough over two legs to lose. And I think they should get through. And Schurtman, my boy, will get a special card because I need him to in FIFA for <laughs> chemistry reasons if I want to switch team around. So Schurtman will get a special card. And uh, no, Roma will go through um, to the round of eight or yeah, quarterfinals. Chelsea and then Barcelona, obviously very big game. This is tough. For Barcelona, I guess. Um, I mean, to, yeah, but I mean, obviously it's tough for Chelsea. But like, yeah, Barcelona look in much better shape than Chelsea do. Chelsea look like world beaters, and then West Ham the next week. So like, yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get with Chelsea. Like, if you got if you saw Chelsea versus Huddersfield today as we're recording, Chelsea destroyed Huddersfield. Like, I mean, it is Huddersfield that it's not Barcelona, but like, Hazard looked incredible. It was their B team. Conte looked like, incredible. They had a lot of reserve players playing. Did they have Pedro playing and William? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could even get better out of that Chelsea team too, because Pedro was awful. Yeah, like you you slot Morata in, you move even William was good, but you slot Morata in, you move Hazard back to left wing, take Pedro out. Um, that team gets even better. So to see, so they could, I mean, Chelsea at their best could fight Barcelona, 
but they need to pull out their best while fighting in the league over two I, legs. I mean, I when you think of Barcelona and Chelsea, you think of the Ronald, Ronaldinho stop chip goal or the uh, uh, Lampard's pass for Ramirez and the chip and the Drogba's disgrace. So, like, it's always created some epic, epic ties. It has, yeah. yeah. Hopefully this one. I, I just don't see Chelsea going, like, going through, with especially, like, I don't know. I just think that the three at the back will have a hard time containing a player yeah. like Messi. Especially, I just don't... I think they need more uh, in the midfield. I, yeah, as P's good, but, like, again, he's going to be coming up against a lot of talent. Christensen's been... Probably, and he's young, so it's always that's always a tough part with him being young. And they haven't really decided on Rudiger or Kane. I think just too much space between the lines, and uh, I don't know if uh, maybe Kante and Bakayoko can keep it quiet. But I just I don't know mm-hmm. about that. I just don't. Think yeah, I don't think Alonso and um, especially to hold Moses. possession. Yeah, especially to hold possession again or Zappa Costa. I don't know. Yeah, this, but like, to yeah. hold possession against. Uh, in a t- tough, tight spaces with Bakayoko and Kante, I don't know about that midfield, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll see. Like uh, Paulinho has been great, so and Iniesta always can turn, you know, carve carve part that team. So it'll be good. But yeah, I think we're both on agreement that Barcelona. Yeah, and then probably yeah, and CVA, should it was actually a very interesting game too. So it is. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, United in pretty good form uh, as of now. Uh, Sevilla in pretty good form as well. Uh, yeah, that Sevilla, that's a, t- that's a tough game, yeah. Sampoli plays a very rock and roll kind of football, and they can either they just go for it. So conceding one goal, two goals is no problem for Sevilla because they can just come back from that. Yeah, they had that comeback um, not too long ago, and yeah. I think Ben Yedder said, like, against, had against Barca, posted about it. I'm not mistaken. I forget who it was against, but yeah, I think it's been here to post about it. But in general, yeah, I don't think I think this is tough for United as well. It's it's a tricky one. It's not you're not getting stuck with but I think Real Madrid for United, but yeah, because United are so good defensively, mm-hmm. and uh, Sevilla is kind of the team that exploits on space and mistakes. So like as we saw against Liverpool last year, those are the teams that are good against and they can come back from and score. But against someone who's organized, it'll be like United versus Ajax last season, in my opinion. Like where they just cut off their supply, cut off the oxygen, basically in a, in a metaphor sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, I agree, would agree that I think United's got the quality to um, frustrate Sevilla and, like you said, cut off everything, cut off that exciting play um, in general. And uh, I think it's going to come down to Lukaku's form if he can get back into form. He's a player that like could easily get back into form quickly. I think more um, with a few goals. It's about Pogba. Pa- well, Pogba being healthy as well, but that's it, it. Seems to be Pogba in relative good form when he's healthy. I, th- I just I, think that Ibra can do what Lukaku is doing at the moment. He can, which is, that's the tricky part, though. But, like, if Ibra can do what Lukaku is doing at the moment, like, is that better, though? Like, do they, they obviously want Lukaku at the beginning of the season form. Obviously, you know, no, no, of course. Um, but, just, yeah, I think to get by Sevilla, they don't need it. But in general, they're going to be looking for it. And, again, like, this is so far in the future. Lukaku could find some form. Yeah, random, well, like, well, randomly, Zlatan could... Ten goals in ten weeks, yeah. Yeah, Zlatan could just come out of nowhere and be amazing and after an injury like that, which would be incredible. But yeah, so I would say we both probably edging Manchester United as well, but like Sevilla could be a fun team to watch in general if if, if United don't completely shut them down, yeah. Alright, so with that, let's just move on to some, you know. Mm-hmm. And we'll try to get like something um, together um, for when we talk about this again to show what our predictions were, um, and then obviously we'll see if we were right and if we want to change any of them um, based on current form. Alright, so let's move on to our FIFA topic. I think we, this is maybe a few days ago, so it might have gone off your ra- radar, but like, I was about to say radar. <laughs> but uh, the icons, there are icons that are in the game that kind of like showed up. It's not confirmed or anything, but just interesting to kind of like look at and talk about a little bit. Um, so I think we'll, we'll uh, if, uh, I think Armstrong will put the link in the description or in the comments. So you can I can try to find the tweet, yeah. Um. I'm um, basing off the tweet, or uh, uh, the person who found it, FIFA Renders. Um, been a great help to the channel in general, FIFA Renders, because this website, anytime you see I put cards up on the screen um, of a player from FIFA, it is using his website where he, you can make your own card and download it um, in HD quality. So F- I always follow him, and then I just happen to see that he, so he's very good with the FUT database. Yeah, he can read the FUT database. He can get inside of it. He can, like, not hack inside of it, but he knows how to get inside of it and read the coding. 
um, and found yes. players, pictures, stat. No, I don't think he found stats, but um, names just, and pictures. So we got players like you know Roy Keane. And so basically, last year's legends, right? I think is there, I think is all there of them are. Who's new? Uh, I don't believe so. No, no. I think it's all yeah. Baresi, more okay. I'll, without going with all the names, but yeah, I, I, it's all players that were in there last year or in previous yeah. years. Yeah. I mean, wh are there any ones that stick out to you that you would love to have in the game? <sighs> For me, not really. I mean, it's, it depends too because we're, now we're going to see them with prime versions. Um, a lot of these guys. I mean. It's nice to, that we might be getting an American legend back in um, with George Weah, so that's at least good. Um, so that one could stick out for me. Uh, but no, it'll be nice to have, like, I know a lot of people are excited that Best was part of the league because we don't, we, uh, Koch is our only right-sided um, yeah, yeah, icon right now. Insane. George Best is insane on his own as, anyways, but as, uh, just positional-wise too, another um, right-sided icon to get into the, into the game would be great too. Um, I actually did enjoy Butcher Gueno's card. Um, last year in draft, um, I didn't use it a ton, but like if I saw Butcher Grano, I always took it because he, he did well for me. So that's a player that I could see um, being good against, especially like we, like I said, we haven't seen we yet we saw these guys in previous years where there's only the one card, um, so they didn't go all out on these cards. Like some of these guys could have amazing like I can you imagine like a prime Bobby Moore card? Like I feel like that that could be a like, yeah, really solid he's center short, back. So I think he won't. He could be yeah, sense. but like he, in English to get strong links. Um, yeah. Icon Bobby Moore could be another option for people. At least it provides more options um, yeah, in different certain positions. Me, I was looking at George Best, and then I was looking mm -hmm. at Le uh, Jans Lehmann because mm -hmm. that allows a lot of hybrids with Boateng and stuff. Uh, yep, it gives a strong link, so I think yep. that would be interesting. And uh, Roy Keane, I think, is a, like a cheap would be a cheap Vieira, especially like his maybe his you know prime card or something. Yeah, he was um, decent last year as well. So, like, that would be interesting because the midfield options are either very average or, you know, very expensive. Yeah, I feel um, like yeah, I feel Overall, same, yeah. I'm kind of disappointed in the quality. Obviously, I would love to have Figo back, but uh, other than that, nothing too special. I just think they need to address the areas like the fullbacks and the mm -hmm. wings uh, a little bit better. Um, and add like something that's really gonna excite the community. Like only player that's really gonna excite the community would be like you know, George Best. Maybe mm -hmm. that's just yeah. I know like a lot of people like John Franco Sola as well, but like it's not like gonna completely the overhaul same level the community. As Ronaldo yeah. or Ronaldinho, you know. Mm -hmm. I think players like Seedorf, mm -hmm. Zidane, Zidane would be. Yeah, Edgar I'm surprised Davids. Zidane's not. Yeah, Edgar Davids. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, Rivaldo, Cafu, you know, like, uh, uh, who else am I thinking of here? Um, any other legends? I know you, maybe like a, a player from back, back in Bauer, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe even a, you know, Eusebio, because, you know, Portuguese striker kind of would make like Ronaldo basically usable without... Any, I mean, Rui Costa is there, but obviously he's not the same level as Ronaldinho. But who's the um? Mex I'm trying. I'm slipping his name. The Mexican Hernandez? player. this? No, not the one that's in the game. The one that's not Sanchez? in the game. Sanchez, Hugo Sanchez. Yeah, who? Yeah, I was gonna say Hugo. Yeah. They should um, put him that, over Hernandez. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to necessarily take out Hernandez at this point. Like, you can have more. Um, but I think that, like, because I think a lot of even. Um, well, Mexican they don't national want too many because if they're gonna do SBCs for icons, it's like all the player prices would be high all the time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. if they have to release them every week, you know? Like, that's yep. the problem. Unless they release, like, five at a time, like, that would be insane. But, you know, that would be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, after this year, though, I don't think they're... They, I mean, unless they continue to do the Prime SBCs, I think that they, like, I don't know. They, they're not, they're cool for a lot of players to get to try out, but, like, I feel like they're not going to do the same thing next year. So, like, when you go into next year, maybe it doesn't matter as much because they're not part of SBCs no, just um, in, the, in the same way. Impact. But, yeah, the market impact this year would be pretty tough. Um, if they were to add these this year, I'm, I'm just thinking like even going future years, like maybe because I think a lot of Mexican fans would agree with you saying uh, that Ugo would deserve to be in over um, Luis Hernandez now. So um, uh, to st they're just happy to have like a Mexican uh, player in the game where now that takes it elevates their excitement to the next level because pl a player that they feel deserves to be as well. Um, like I'm surprised that they don't have like an American player in there, even though we don't have anyone deserving. 
Yeah. Oh, um, not to mention, like, there was Andre this year, too, which is, I think, insane for a lot of people. Cause... That was huge, yep. Yeah, stuff like that. I mean, Ronaldinho and Henri and Ronaldo, yeah, were huge. Huge, huge, huge. But, um, yeah, like, even, like, Americans don't deserve it. Like, you could put it, you could just pick an American, like, a Land Donovan again. Uh, yeah, I don't even though it's not it. deserved. As long as it's, like, a low rating, it's just cool <clears> for <throat> chemistry and, like, you know, have, a, like, a decent card, like, you know, in the game, like a Lala's. Yep. Yeah, yeah Lala's actually usable. Yeah. Uh, especially uh, if you start doing with prime versions, baby versions, like. Exactly. I think it'll be fun to, like, you know, like, I was thinking, like, you know, if they want to add, like, different nations and stuff, like, maybe a Shinji, like, Nakamura or something, you know, like. Mm -hmm. I think that would be more fun to add, is start getting random, not random, but, like, better nations. Like, even if it's less, like, I know that there's a lot of players that are deserving from big nations that aren't in the game yet. But, like, yeah, some of your lesser nations. That's why I was saying, like, U.S. squad. Like, I would firm, fully know Donovan or Lalas is not deserving in comparison to some of the names that aren't in the game now. But, like, from a worldwide standpoint that FIFA is, like, it's nice to have different countries represented as much as possible. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, it's someone from the Arab world, you know, maybe mm -hmm. a, a Viduka or someone. Like, that would be cool. I, obviously, everyone wants usable legends, so I hope they give them decent stats that in a case where they're more useful than, like, I don't know, like a Gabriel Jesus, you know? Yeah, I, I think we'll see that more now with... Like, because, like, in previous years, we've had really legends that weren't great in general. They were in the game because of copyright reasons, I think, and they were easier to get, or they easier to get their sign-offs. Um, and you only got one card, so you got so many crap, like, 86, 87 legends that were discard value, um, where with the prime versions now, like, even if the baby's not great, um, but it's, like, from your, ho your home nation, you'll be more excited to get that baby version and upgrade them eventually to the, uh, the prime version. Um, and the prime version, like, I think the prime version can have better, should have, like, better stats than, like you said, uh, Gabriel Jesus, like, even if the player wasn't a mate, like, a uh, Landon Donovan, like, again, he should have, like, he should have a center forward card as well, um, and then a right sided card. Um, so, like, even though he doesn't deserve to have, like, amazing, amazing stats, his prime version should be much better than players that we have just regular gold cards in the game. Yeah. And I think that, that's where the excitement's gonna come from this year now with the three players. But again, I really hope they do a big marketing push still, just to bring excitement to the game, like, you know. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't think, I think we're looking after team of the year. Um, and that downtime, like right after team of the year, before team of the season, that middle uh, in between, like your yeah. your f February to March. What are some area. icons that you think would? I said some, but do you have any other? I was thinking like either Michael Balak, Zidane, mm -hmm. Seedorf. Um, yeah, Zidane. Zidane almost has to be a reason, right? Like, because he's still pretty much like in the like in the like he's in the game, I guess. But um, as a coach, but like I mean, like he's part of the game. Like the worldwide game, like he's not just like hiding in his home, like he's out there all the time. So I got to imagine EA's have been in contact with him about having an icon card. If they could snag Beckham from Pest, that would be cool too. But probably yeah, not, but yeah, maybe, that's tough. But maybe like uh, as I, I was thinking of Rivaldo or Romario or you know, uh, but, uh, what's his name, Baggio. Mm -hmm those players would bring so much hype to the game and like bring so many people who maybe not playing it like older generations because they're so connected to these icons so. yeah that would be the cool part i think with older generations playing neville, video games that's what, gary neville that's what yeah. we want. yes more gary neville is what everyone needs in their life i mean they can even do if they want to do, you're talking about marketing push do a marketing push where like how last year we got those um end of an era sdcs yeah those end of an era guys those cards basically but icon versions um, you get now you get like even players like you're talking about generations like if a lot of people stop playing like these can be later I think there's people more deserving but like your Gerard um, your Xavi Alonso's and so on um, like do a marketing push to say like first year out of FIFA like coming back in as icons like It'll we're, ho we're hopping right on it right away the one that people do the most is selected for next year <laughs> oh okay like do an SBC and you get like the baby version or something like that no no as in like like the a, a, a voting card. one? Like a footies card. Yeah, but what would you get at the end? Like, just, like, a... No, you would get an icon card to use this year. That's, like, an icon that's not in the game. Yeah, so you get, like, so, like, say, like, hey, we only get to put one in. Gerard, Lampard, Xavi Alonso. Yeah, Everyone does the SBC vote. You get, like, you get what their baby version would be if you did the SBC. Yeah, Obviously, so they make it hard, so you only get to vote one. You, you oh, you don't get it till next year? 
You don't get it in FIFA 18. You just get it in this game, and then that's it. They, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you get this year, not next year. I was like, you don't get it until next year. I don't think any people will do that. But, okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You get what their baby version in 18 would be. You get in 17 um, if you vote on that one, but you can only do one, and then after that, they all disappear. Yeah. That would be fun. That's a good marketing push. Whether for, That doesn't have to be just for the new guys. It could be for old guys, too. Um, obviously, there's a lot of places they could take icons and legends, and there's always going, no matter how many they add, they're either going to add way too many, and it's going to be kind of annoying to have that many, or they're going to have... Oh, there's always going to be people saying, like, how is this guy not in? Like, if this guy's in, how is this guy not in? This guy's in, how is this guy not in? Like, of course, it's always going to be like that. There's always going to be people on the outside looking in. Um, they can't add every single person. Um, so they kind of have to be, they do have to be careful with what, with they, like, what they choose and who they choose. Like, yeah. like I'm surprised, yeah. like, Luis Hernandez is in, it, is in it, honestly. There you go. Because, like, most people would agree that he's not even the most iconic Mexican player. Yeah. So well, speaking on icons that are you know, coming, it seems there's a theory that surfaced. Since we were talking about icons, that I would just <laughs> want to touch upon, like yeah, it kind of drops hints, little, little little seeds of who potentially, you know, who are they going to release in the icon prime icon SBC, and when they're going to release it. So when the theory goes like when they have marquee matchups that are completely random, which is every week, but. It, no, well, it, I, I, I've no, I've noticed it now that you've said it. I've noticed it a lot more often in these so. weeks you're talking about. No, it's not. But I'm, I'm, I was going to continue. I was joking around trying to saying that. But like, because I feel like there's always at least one random one every week. But like, that's just for an investment standpoint. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now that you've said, now that you've explained the situation to me, like, yeah, and I I've actually seen it, it's a lot more obvious. Yeah, I mentioned to a couple of people, and they're like, "No, no way." But like, the pattern has repeated like now three, four times, and it makes me think that it's actually there. So like. When um, Andre was about to, be, or Petit was about to release, there was Monaco, um, I believe. And then when Andre was about to release, there was like Arsenal and Monaco again, which was weird. Like Monaco came back twice in a marquee matchup. Um, mm -hmm. And then when Ricosta was going to be released, there was like uh, Benfica in it. And when Schmeichel was going to release, there was like a Bromby in it. I know this like maybe happened the same week. I'm just. I think yeah, and, and, and like it may, it like obviously, it, this could just be coincidence. Yeah, obviously, we have no official was, news. There was like Bromby and Benfica in the same marquee matchup. Um, and then this week we've got Marseille and Frankfurt, which could indicate a Frankfurt and Schalke. Um, and then no, no, as, as, as separate teams. I'm not Marseille's not in there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, sorry, sorry, my bad. Uh, Frankfurt, who Akocha played for. <laughs> Um, uh, who are the other teams? We talked about like how well Club Bruges Anderlecht makes sense because it is a yeah. Bel it's like a Belgian derby. Arsenal well. Newcastle be indicating Burkamp Prime being yeah out. or Shearer Prime um, from a Newcastle standpoint. Exactly, especially Newcastle. It makes no sense why it's a, it's like it's not like Arsenal and Ar Arsenal Newcastle makes no sense. Yeah, like they're not rival clubs. They're not even in the same like zone. Like they're not in the same spot in the standings against each other. Like. Shearer and Burkham could be, uh, or Vieira, one of those three, yeah. and then Bococha could be like, it, we'll see if it actually happens on Thursday, because mm -hmm. they really seem to release it every two weeks. Which is Yeah, so if you're watching this, like, if, if we miss the player, like, if, if you know someone that played for Schalke, if played for Amiens, SC, or uh, Troyes, even a club Bruges Anderlecht, um, like, who, like, leave in the comments, like, the list of people that, like, the icons that haven't been released yet. Um, as primes that could be in these teams, like, and we'll see if like if we're right with it. Like again, it could be coincidence, but like it, now that's happened weeks over weeks, and you've explained like each situation to me, like it's it seems less odd. Like it seems like they're doing this on purpose, to me yeah, at least. And that's me with like the less knowledge of like um, the history of some of the icons as well. Yeah, so somebody mentioned this to me. Shout out J Rhodes, but like I looked at it and kind of made sense to me. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe we'll see. Like. If it's happened a few times, then it's an obvious pattern. So watch out on Thursday if there's actually icons released. And Breaking news while recording. From a FIFA standpoint, 88 Salah is in, icon is in concepts right now Ooh. as a striker. So there you go. That's it. I just happened to see it. I was, yeah. Um, I didn't happen to see it. It's on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, so. You, breaking news is in you'll be listening to this tomorrow and know that we heard it right away um, but yeah so they're thinking it's either the player of the year because he did just win player of the year for African Cup of Nations um, or player of the month so either way 88 icon or 88 now that we're talking about icons 88 Sala is in concepts so completely was unplanned just happened to be while I was scrolling Twitter happened like 15 minutes ago people noticed it um, so yeah 
So look for an icon, or icon, I keep saying it. 88 Sala coming to you soon. Um, maybe he's usable finally. I don't think that would fix his weak foot, but you never know. <laughs> Uh, so that's it, really. Uh, I think we got that. I like I like the discussion we had with um, Champions League as well. Uh, I love the Champions League, and it's super exciting to see. Even if we are completely guessing on what the form could be of players, I mean, literally Barcelona could Messi, Messi, Suarez, and Dembele could come back from injury, then get injured again. Um, so they could all be injured, and that changes completely everything. But like, I like getting these early predictions out. Um, so let us know your predictions for the round of 16. If your team is in the round of 16. Um, Unlike Aguilar and I's. Um, explain, like, do you think that they have a chance to win? Who they like? If they are, who they are, who it is? Um, what do you think? What do you expect of the round of sixteen and stuff like that? So, um, and then obviously all the icon talk. Leave icons down below that you want in the game because I think it's really fun to see from your guys' standpoint. Yeah. Which so, ones do you think will create the biggest marketing push in your opinion? Who would <clears> what, who would make you want to buy the game as soon as it's announced? You know, like that's what I want to know. But yeah. Make sure you hit that in the comments. And you gotta uh, smash that bell for the notification so you know right when we post it because sometimes it's always good in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon. So you want to know right when it posts, you can listen to it first. Um, go subscribe on SoundCloud and iTunes as well if you want to listen to it strictly an auto version. I don't know why you would, but because obviously our faces are better. Uh, I mean, no, but if you want to do that, subscribe there. Okay. Uh, so while you're down there, smash the like button as well. Obviously, there's a big red button that says subscribe, 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 and we will see you. Next, Next time. time.